Hi everyone, my name is Jun Chun Yang. I'm a PhD student at Kai Chi Meilong University. Today I will be talking about set cache, a memory efficient and scalable in memory key value cache for small objects. This is joint work with Xiao from Twitter and my advisor Rashmi. Let's first talk about in memory key value cache. Let's say you open Twitter app. The app indirectly sends a bunch of requests to different services. Some of these services are backed by backends such as durable key value store or relational database or some computation service. You tune the data or result from the on backend each time when the user sends the request, it's very expensive. Therefore, engineers usually add a cache in between, in between the service and the backend to reduce latency, increase throughput and scalability, also reduce the backend load. We observe that today's memory caching system has have significant room for improvement, both in terms of memory efficiency, throughput, and scalability. And one of the reasons why um, memory is not efficiently used is because of TDR and expiration, which is the, uh, the focus of today's talk. Um, for the remaining ones, we have uh, we discussed it in the paper. Okay, um, TDR stands for time to need. It is said when the object is written into the cache. When, when an object expires, it cannot be used for serving. In other words, expired objects are not useful. We observe that short TTLs are widely used in production. Why? There's three TTL use cases. First, TTL is used to reduce stale data because cache writes are best effort. Therefore, it is possible that data in the cache are different, uh, inconsistent with the data in the backend. Therefore, TTL is used to bound this staleness. Second, TTL is used for periodic refresh. Um, for example, some machine learning related computation service which use TTL to trigger your computation, say every few hours. Third, TTL is used for implicit deletion, such as read limiters or GDPR compliance. Why do we talk about TTL and what's the impact of TTL? We observe that TTL reduces the effective working set size and it makes removing expired objects very critical. This figure shows the working set size over time for one workload. And we observe that if we don't consider TTL, uh, the working set size keeps growing. Well, if we consider TTL, the working set size is almost always bounded. In other words, if we can remove expired objects in time, we probably do not need a lot of emissions. As a takeaway of these slides, we, we observe that timely removal of expired objects is very critical for um, cache memory efficiency because expiration removes objects that cannot be used in the future, while eviction removes objects that could potentially be used in the future. Okay. Now let's start, talk about existing solutions for TTL ex expiration. The high level conclusion is that they're either not efficient or not sufficient. By efficient, I mean whether the approach have small overhead. By sufficient, I mean whether the approach have, uh, can remove all or most expired objects. We summarize existing techniques in the following table. When, and we, uh, we, uh, we observe that this technique fall into two categories. Um, the first one is lazy expiration. Lazy expiration. The second one is proactive expiration. And we observe that we further observe that um, they're either not efficient or not sufficient. The details of um, comparison is in the paper. Okay, as a summary of the motivation, we um, we just show that existing memory uh, in memory caching system are not memory efficient because they cannot efficiently or and timely remove expired objects. Further, in the paper, we show that. Um, the, these systems have you only have huge per object, object metadata. For example, when cache to use 56 bytes per object metadata, while objects are usually small from tens of bytes to hundreds of bytes. Further, they suffer from memory fragmentation and it wastes huge, uh, huge pressures cache size on memory fragmentation. So that's memory efficiency. In terms of super scalability, we observe that existing system make trade-offs between efficiency and throughput of scalability. And we summarize um, the state of art system in this system, uh, in this table, and we observe that they either improve memory efficiency, like these ones, or improve uh, super scalability, like these two. Okay, now it's time for me to present set cache, a memory efficient and scalable key memory key value cache for small objects. As high level overview, set cache stands for segment structure cache. It has high memory efficiency. It can efficiently and sufficiently remove all the expired objects. It has tiny object metadata. It has almost no memory fragmentation. It uses a merge-based eviction to achieve no miss ratio, and it has high performance. Achieve, it has uh, achieves high throughput with close to linear scalability. We expect set cache to end the trade production this year. Okay, now let's talk about set cache design. Set cache has three components. 
The first is called, is called object store, where, uh, where it basically it is a heap, and we divide the object store into segments, where each segment is a small fixed size log storing objects of similar TTLs. The second is a hash table, um, like any other ca cache, which, um, which also has a hash table. But the difference is that Secash use a bug chaining hash table, unlike mem memcached, which use object chaining hash table. Um, each row here is one bucket, and we on average we hash seven objects to each row. Okay, the third component is new is TTL buckets, where each where the TTL bucket is a array of metadata, and each TTL bucket is responsible for one TTL range. From each TTL bucket, it links out a segment chain, and all the segments in the segment chain have the same TTL. To draw that object, uh, we first find the TTL bucket, then find the last segment in the um, in the segment chain, try to this segment. If the segment is full, we grab a new segment and try to a new segment and link the segment to the end of the segment chain. To read an object, we first look up in the hash table and find the object information, which is a pointer to, um, to the data in the segment, and we read the data from the segment. Now let's talk about Secash design principles. Secash has three design principles. First, Secash maximize metadata approximation and sharing so that it can reduce per object metadata. Recall that Secash groups objects into segments. So this way it, it can approximate and share metadata between all ob objects in the same segment. So this is a memcached object store where you have um, the object metadata stored together with the, the object data. And sometimes the object metadata can be larger than the object data. Here is Secash object store. We leave most object metadata into this um, segment metadata. And this metadata is shared by all the objects in the segment. Besides sharing in a segment, we also have sharing in hash bucket. So each hash bucket had, has um, eight slots and seven slots used to um, store item information. Well, the first slot is used to store some shared metadata between all the items hashed to this bucket. The second design principle uh, is be proactive, don't be lazy. So Secash want to efficiently and proactive remove expired objects. Recall that Secash has these TTL buckets where um, each TTL links out a time sorted TTL index segment chain. And objects in one segment share uh, the same metadata. So this shares creation time and TTL and they expire at the same time. Further, segment in the same chain, segments in the same chain have the same TTL of a sorted creation time. Therefore, segments in the same chain have, the, um, have sorted expiration time. So S1 here, Expand first of uh, before sec S three and S four. Okay, so with these two, um, here is how Secash um achieves efficient proactive TTL expansion. It uses a background thread to scan these TTL buckets every second and remove the expired segment. And the TTL bucket is a very small array of metadata and it can fit in the CPU cache. So scanning this um, small array is very efficient. The third design principle of Secash is that Secash perform macro management. So it, it manages segments, which is groups of objects, not objects. Therefore, expiration and eviction happen on the segment level. And Secash does not need to maintain, um, say, object free queue or object error chain. Therefore, it does not need locking on these, um, these chains or queues. Also, uh, by macro management, Secash performs less book bookkeeping and the necessary bookkeeping are performed in a batched and sequential fashion. So this increases the, the throughput. And because only the segment chain requires log, uh, segment chain change requires logging, um, and each segment stores thousands to tens of thousands of, of objects. Therefore, Secash effectively reduces the logging frequency by thousands of times. Okay, so, um, there are more content which is, we cannot cover in the talk, uh, such as segment homogeneity, margin based eviction, and how we design approximate and smooth frequency counter to achieve um, reduced mystery ratio. Now, let's talk about evaluation. Um, we, we implement Secash on top of Pelican, which is Twitter's open source caching framework. And we compare Secash to two production systems and two research systems using five production traces. We evaluate using Twitter production fleet. Let's first talk about memory efficiency. And we use relative cache size as the metric. It is lower, the lower, the better. The X is showing uh, the workloads. First, we show the Twitter's production software, which is fixed at one. Then we show Secash. 
We observe, uh, we observe that compared to production, cash reduced the memory footprint by 40 to 90%, especially on the largest cluster, which is this one, it reduced the memory footprint by 60%. Compared to memcached, memcached plus use uh, scanning for expiration and to research system, Cercache, um reduced mem memory footprint by 22 to 60% compared to uh, the state of art. Now, in terms of throughput and scalability, this figure shows single thread throughput. It is the higher, the better. We observe that compared to production, Zcash has similar, similar throughput. But compared to uh, memcached and research system, um, Zcash has significantly higher throughput. In terms of scalability, uh, we observe that memcached stops scaling at around eight threads, while Zcash achieves close to near scalability uh, until like 24 threads. Now let's talk. Here is the summary. Um, set cache is a segment structure cache. It groups objects into segments for high memory efficiency and high performance. It can achieve efficient and operative TDR expiration. It reduces object metadata using metadata approximation and sharing. It has almost no memory fragmentation. It has small mass ratio or memory footprint with using a merge based eviction. It achieves high throughput with continuous scalability using macro management. We open source our trace and our code here and the following URL. Thank you everyone for attending today's talk. And I also want to thank uh, a lot of people who helped with this project.